Dan Gallagher is a successful lawyer and a good family man. He has a beautiful wife named Beth and a sweet six-year-old daughter named Ellen. They are invited to a party at a Japanese restaurant for the night. After leaving Ellen with the babysitter, they attend the party. When Dan goes to the bar to get champagne, he meets a charming woman named Alex Forrest, who has been working as an editor at a publishing house for a few weeks where Dan has been practicing law. As their conversation deepens, Dan leaves when Beth calls him. The next morning, Beth and Ellen set out to spend the weekend with Grandma. Dan bids them farewell. Then, he attends a meeting regarding a case at the publishing house. Eventually, Alex arrives, and the meeting begins. While the meeting is in progress, Alex and Dan constantly exchange glances. After the meeting, they wait for a taxi in the pouring rain at different points. Dan's umbrella, unfortunately, fails to open. Alex notices this and offers him her umbrella. Unable to find a vacant taxi, Dan suggests grabbing coffee. As they warm themselves with hot coffee, their conversation deepens. Eventually, as two adults who can keep each other's secrets, they find a common ground, and they share hours of romantic moments. They feel passion for each other. The energetic duo, losing none of their enthusiasm, attends a dance party at night. Afterward, Dan seems to want to go home, but Alex convinces him not to by promising to give him an experience he has never had before. Alex and Dan experience another passionate romance in the elevator and continue for hours at Alex's home. Dan quietly returns home early in the morning. He calls his wife, asks how Ellen is doing, and assures her that everything is fine. Beth says they had a happy weekend and mentions that Ellen wants a rabbit. Dan asks her not to promise the daughter about it because he doesn't like the idea of the house becoming like Noah's Ark. Beth says she will be back the next day since she hasn't seen the inside of the house they are considering buying. She hangs up, and then Dan's phone rings. It's Alex, asking why he left without notice and expressing her displeasure. Dan explains that he had to return and left a romantic note by the bedside anyway. Despite Dan's various excuses, Alex insists on inviting him to have lunch together. When Alex promises that she will be a good girl, he reluctantly accepts the invitation. They have lunch to the accompaniment of Madama Butterfly. Dan shares a childhood memory about the first opera he watched. Alex questions why all interesting men are married. Dan says perhaps their unattainability makes them interesting and praises his wife and child. When Alex asks, if everything is so perfect, why are you here, Dan is stunned. Alex expresses that they had a wonderful time last night and she wants to see Dan again repeatedly and just wants to know where he stands. Dan, being married, says this may not be possible, and Alex interprets this explanation as her own misfortune. Then they slept together again. When Dan wakes up, he immediately starts dressing, saying he's running late. Alex, unhappy with him leaving like that each time, tries to stop him in anger. Dan tells her that he didn't hide the fact that he's married, and they started this relationship with full awareness. He asks her to be rational. Alex says, it would have been a more acceptable explanation if you had just told me to fuck off. Dan responds with, fuck off. In response, Alex kicks him and shouts, get out. As Dan is about to leave, Alex appears, expressing a desire to say goodbye like friends, apologizing for making him angry through tears. Dan tells her there's no need to cry, but as they share a final kiss, he notices that Alex has cut her wrists, he panics and tries to help her. Unable to leave her in that state, he tightly wraps her wounds with a shirt. Later, Dan calls his wife using Alex's phone, pretending to be at his own home, and completes their daily routine conversation. Dan reluctantly stays with Alex that night, and in the morning, he expresses that he has to leave. Alex promises to go to the hospital, and now feeling more at peace, Dan gives her a small kiss and leaves. When he gets home, messes up his bed as if he had spent the whole night at his own house and feeds his meal to his dog. This way, Beth won't suspect anything. Dan returns home from work, finally reunited with his wife and daughter. They catch up and the happy family scene continues. Beth really likes the suburban house. The next morning, they go together to see the house. Dan also likes it, and the prospect of saving more money by not living in New York anymore appeals to the couple, so they decide to buy the house. 
When Dan goes to the office at noon, he is surprised. Alex is waiting for him. He invites her to his office, she apologizing for the events of the previous night, expressing gratitude for not leaving him alone, and revealing that she has two tickets for Madama Butterfly tonight, suggesting they go together. Dan politely declines the offer, and Alex, seemingly unaffected, bids farewell for the last time. However, that evening, Alex appears shattered and emotionally broken on camera, while Dan is enjoying the night with his wife and closest friends, in high spirits. The next day, Dan goes to the office and learns that Alex has called him multiple times. Overwhelmed, Dan reluctantly answers the last call, making it clear that he doesn't want to meet again. Alex seems to accept this with understanding. In the evening, Dan praises his beautiful wife and is about to get closer to her when the doorbell rings, an unfortunate moment. The visitors are close friends, and they spend another lively night together. Meanwhile, the phone rings persistently. Beth answers but gets no response. Dan realizes that it's Alex calling and becomes tense. The phone rings again in the early morning while they are asleep. Alex is calling, and Dan pretends to talk to him as if he were a client. Alex, in a pressuring manner, insists on meeting at noon. Thinking it might be the last conversation, Dan reluctantly agrees to meet to resolve the matter. They meet, and Dan emphasizes his happy marriage, urging Alex not to disrupt it. Alex confesses that she doesn't want to cause harm and admits that she is in love with him. When Dan insists that it was just a one-night stand and nothing more, Alex drops the bombshell that she is pregnant and they will have a baby. Dan is shocked, and the revelation that Alex wasn't using birth control adds to his astonishment. He starts to speak more calmly and offers to cover the expenses for an abortion. However, Alex, being 36 years old and seeing this as perhaps her last chance to have a child, is determined to give birth. She hopes that Dan might want to be a part of it. The next day, Alex leaves the house, and shortly after, Dan secretly enters her home. He rummages through some documents, hoping to find evidence that she might be involved with someone else. However, he comes up empty-handed. Subsequently, he confides in his closest friend about the difficult situation he's going through. As he doesn't have much understanding of family law, he hopes that his friend can assist him. Dan is terrified at the prospect of losing his family. Alex continues relentlessly calling Dan's home phone. Upon learning from the operator that the number has been changed and the operator refuses to share the new one, Alex becomes enraged. The next day, Dan is absent-minded. Returning from work, he is in for a big surprise. Alex, having learned that Dan is moving, engages in a conversation with Beth as if she intends to buy the house. Beth introduces Alex to her husband. Alex already mentions that they had met before at a party in a Japanese restaurant. Dan pretends not to remember and, using work as an excuse, requests permission to leave. Alex expresses serious interest in the house, upon hearing this, Beth provides her with a new phone number so they can communicate. Dan can only watch. In the evening, Dan goes to confront Alex. Alex greets him as if he were her husband and remains quite composed. Dan shouts at her, calling her pathetic. Alex asserts that she doesn't need pity, refuses to be used and discarded like a prostitute, demands respect as the mother of his child, and attempts to get closer to him. As Dan is about to leave the house, Alex threatens to tell his wife everything. This infuriates Dan, and he ignores her. Alex immediately calls Beth, angry, but still says nothing. The next day, Dan accelerates the moving process. The phone at his new house rings persistently, causing Dan great stress as the likelihood of Alex calling is high. Fortunately, it turns out to be his assistant, and he feels relieved. The following day, Dan is in good spirits because he has finally obtained the bunny his daughter has been wanting for a long time and wants to give her the gift as soon as possible. However, this joyful moment turns into a nightmare as he discovers that his car has been rendered inoperable with some chemicals. Dan realizes that Alex is behind this. He calls his wife and explains that the car completely burned due to the electrical system. Later, he buys a new car and sets out to go home. Alex continues to secretly follow him. Eventually, Dan arrives home, and the priceless happiness on his daughter's face when he gives her the gift is undeniable. 
The only person disturbed by this immortal moment is Alex. The next day, Dan goes to the police station and, as if speaking on behalf of a client, requests a warning for Alex. The lieutenant explains that without evidence, they can't do anything based on suspicion, but they can intervene during the act. A few days later, while Ellen practices for a theatrical role at her grandmother's house, her sweet image warms Dan's heart, and he hugs her tightly, repeatedly expressing his love. They return home, and Ellen rushes to her bunny. However, a dreadful truth awaits the family. Beth enters the kitchen and notices something boiling on the stove. She opens the lid and screams, revealing that it's Ellen's adorable bunny. Unable to bear this sadness, Ellen collapses onto the bed. Dan believes it's time to share the truth with Beth and tells her that Alex is the one behind it and admits to having a relationship with her. Beth is devastated and questions whether he is in love with Alex. Dan explains that it was just a one-night stand with no meaning and apologizes. Beth seems forgiving, but when she learns that Alex is pregnant with Dan, she loses control. A few hours later, Dan calls Alex and tells her that his wife now knows everything. Alex doesn't believe him. Beth, in a clear tone, threatens to kill Alex if she comes near her family again and hangs up. Alex appears shattered. A few days later, Beth goes to the school to pick up her daughter, but the teachers inform her that she has already left. Beth searches everywhere for her daughter with worry. Meanwhile, Ellen is on a roller coaster with Alex. Unaware of everything, Beth continues to search for her daughter frantically, and eventually, due to her distraction, she gets into a traffic accident. It's clear that Alex is trying to bond with Ellen. Dan rushes to the hospital with concern. Luckily, learning that his wife is not in serious condition somewhat reassures him. In tears, he promises his wife that he will fix everything. Afterward, he confronts Alex at her door, forcefully entering. A cat and mouse chase and violent struggles ensue. Dan, wanting to end the nightmare, attempts to strangle her but realizes it's a mistake and lets her go. Seizing this opportunity, Alex tries to stab him, but Dan doesn't allow it and leaves without saying a word. He then goes back to the police station to file a complaint against Alex. A few days later, Beth prepares to take a shower. Dan brings her a towel, and Beth asks him for a cup of hot tea. Dan puts the kettle on the stove and locks all the doors since he is still suspicious. However, Alex has already entered the house, appearing behind Beth with a large knife. Alex, seeming mentally unstable, questions why Beth is there. While repeatedly rubbing the knife on her own leg, she argues that Dan shares the same feelings and electricity between them. Accusing Beth of moving to the rural house to take Dan away from her, she blames her for selfishness and randomly brandishes the knife at Beth. A struggle ensues, but due to the noise of the kettle, Dan can't hear his wife's cries for help. Eventually, he hears her and rushes in just in time. He sustains a few knife wounds but manages to control Alex by submerging her in the bathtub. Alex appears drowned, but suddenly, she attacks Dan. Beth shoots her right in the chest, putting an end to the nightmare. In the next scene, after Dan talks to the lieutenant and bids him farewell, he returns home, embracing his wife tightly. The film concludes with a happy family photo of Dan, Beth, and Ellen. If you've enjoyed watching so far, don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel. I'll see you next time.